Hi there, let's prove the nested interval property. We'll go over what the property is. This picture will help us understand it. We'll go through a few quick examples and then jump right into the proof. You can check the description or the video chapters for timestamps if you want to skip around the video. For the proof of this property, we'll need the axiom of completeness, which we saw was the key to completing the real numbers and assuring us that it has no holes. The nested interval property is another thing close to the foundation of the real numbers, and it's like another formulation of the idea that the real numbers have no holes. Here's what it says. For each natural number n, Assume we are given a closed interval that we'll call IN with left endpoint AN and right endpoint BN. And you know how closed intervals work. They just include all the real numbers between the endpoints, including the endpoints themselves. Also, this is important, we're assuming that each interval IN, again, we've got one for every natural number, each one IN contains the next one. I n plus 1. So then what we have is an infinite sequence of nested closed intervals. The nested interval, the nested interval property says that this nested sequence of closed intervals, I1, which contains I2, which contains I3, and so on, has a non-empty intersection. I think this result seems kind of obvious at first, but at least for me, if you think about it a little more, it starts to seem less obvious. Here's a picture of what's going on. We've got our real number line, and then we've got a bunch of closed intervals. A1 and B1 mark our first closed interval, and it contains the next closed interval, A2, B2, which contains the next closed interval, marked by A3 and B3, and so on. You've got AN and BN, just to represent an arbitrary closed interval in the sequence, and it just goes on. We've got more and more closed intervals. And I think it's not at all obvious that any number is not going to get left out at some point. As the intervals get closer and closer together, how could we be sure, with an infinite nest of intervals like this, that there's gonna be some number that's in every single one of them, all infinitely many closed intervals? That's a pretty significant result. And indeed, the nested interval property guarantees that there will be at least some number that is in all of the closed intervals. Let me show you just a few quick examples. Here we've got a sequence of nested closed intervals, Jn, going from negative 1 over n to 1 over n. As you might be able to guess, no matter how far we go with this sequence of nested intervals, they're never going to leave out 0. 0 is included in every single one of those intervals, and so it is the case that if we take the intersection of every closed interval jn from n equals 1 to infinity, it's going to just contain 0. So it's not empty. It does have an element. The nested interval property guarantees this. But in this example, I think it's pretty easy to actually see what that element is. In this second sequence of nested intervals kn, each interval goes from negative 1 minus 1 over n to 1 plus 1 over n. So the first closed interval is going to be going from negative 2 to positive 2, and then from there they're just going to get closer and closer to being negative 1 to positive 1. They're never quite going to get to that interval, but everything in this interval will actually be contained in all of these. So the intersection of all of the closed intervals, Kn, is non-empty, and it in fact contains infinitely many numbers. Lastly, let me show you this sort of non-example, Ln. Here we've got open intervals, not closed intervals, and so the nested interval property does not apply. That doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have a non-empty intersection, but in this case, it does not. And you should be able to see that 
Notice that the right endpoint of these intervals will just be getting closer and closer to zero. So at some point, every positive number is going to get cut off because this one over n term is just gonna get arbitrarily close to zero. So no positive number is in all of these open intervals and zero isn't in them either because it's the left endpoint, but it's an open interval, so it doesn't contain zero. And so the intersection of all of these open intervals is in fact empty. All right, let's prove the nested interval property. In order to prove that this nested sequence of closed intervals has a non-empty intersection, by definition, we're gonna need to find a number x that is an element of every one of these infinitely many closed intervals. So where do we look to find such a number? Well, if x is going to be in every closed interval, it certainly needs to be greater than or equal to every single one of the left endpoints. Otherwise, it would get cut off eventually and no longer be in the intervals. If we're looking for a number that's at least as big as every single one of the left endpoints, you might start to think about supremums. Because we would like a number that's greater than or equal to every a n, but we also don't want it to be any bigger than necessary. Otherwise, it might be bigger than one of the b n's, and thus it would get cut off and left out by one of them. So definitely we're looking for a supremum, a least upper bound, but we don't know if the set of left endpoints has a supremum. In order to show that it does, we would have to show that the set of left endpoints is bounded. Then the axiom of completeness would guarantee us a supremum. So let's go ahead and consider the set of left endpoints. We'll say big A is the set containing every left endpoint A n. Like I said, we want to show that this set is bounded above, so we can use the axiom of completeness to guarantee a supremum. And in fact, bounding this set above is very easy. In fact, every B n, every single one of these B n's, has to be an upper bound of our set A. Because if ever there was a a n, any particular a n, like a2 for example, that was greater than any one of the b n's, well that would mean that the intervals aren't nested like they're supposed to be. If one of the a n's was greater than a b n, it would be jumping out of the nest. It's not allowed to do that. All of these intervals have to successively contain each other. So for sure, Every single B n is an upper bound of A, and that's more than enough to use the axiom of completeness. So we can say, by the axiom of completeness, the supremum of our set A certainly exists. And let's call that x and hope that this number is the one we're looking for. Now we just need to show that x is indeed an element of every one of the closed intervals. So let's just take an arbitrary closed interval i n. Taking this arbitrary closed interval, of course, it has some left endpoint a n and some right endpoint b n. If we can show that x is between a n and b n for this arbitrary closed interval, then for sure x is in every single one of the closed intervals and is thus in the intersection and will be done the proof. Now, for starters, it's really easy for us to say that x has to be greater than or equal to a n. Why is that? Well, what is x? x is the supremum of the set of left endpoints. So by definition, it's an upper bound of the endpoints, so it's certainly greater than or equal to the left endpoint a n. What about b n? Well, for bn, again, the supremum comes in handy. We remarked earlier that every bn is an upper bound of a. They have to be because the intervals are nested. However, x is the least upper bound of a because x is the supremum. So by definition, it has to be less than or equal to every bn. 
Again, that's because every BN is an upper bound of A, but X is the least upper bound of A. And so for sure, X is between AN and BN, which by definition of a closed interval, implies that X is an element of IN. Finally, since we've demonstrated that the supremum of the left endpoints is an element of every single one of the closed intervals, we can say that this supremum, X, is an element of the intersection of the sequence of nested intervals. So the intersection of IN from N equals one to infinity. And indeed, that means the intersection is non-empty. And so we have proven the nested interval property. And once more, the nested interval property tells us that if we have a nested sequence of closed intervals, they might be getting tighter and tighter, but there's not going to be a hole there in the middle because the real numbers are complete. So there's going to be at least some number that is in every single one of the closed intervals. Hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Sure can take much more